Welcome back to the Axman Podcast, 23 Tech 2, Episode 5. McHewson is busy today with honor guard stuff, so I will be. I want to make sure that these people got to come to the podcast and share their views. Today I'm here with Senior Airman Murray and Cadet Airman Johnson. And they would like to share their experience here and some things, so let's get into it. So, Murray, you are wearing the yellow rope, which means that you are flight chief. How do you feel about that? I'm excited, but also nervous to an uh, extent because I am in charge of 42 other men, making sure that they succeed into, you know, doing, doing good, keeping them out of trouble, you know, just a bit marching them. So there's a lot that goes into flight chief. You can get stressful. You can want to quit sometimes, but you got to keep pushing for the good of the flight. I like that because when I was SCOGI and when I was element leader, which I'm element leader right now, and I struggle a little bit sometimes because it really is, you really want to help the flight, but sometimes we have our little downfalls, but I like the whole keep it positive attitude and all that because it really helps the whole flight. And no matter what, just keep pushing because it really does make a difference in the whole flight. And I think that's awesome. One thing I've noticed with the whole keeping it positive thing, as long as you keep it positive, as long as leadership keeps it positive, the flight will be in a better mood. If leadership is in a bad mood, the whole flight's gonna think it's okay to be in a bad mood. It's the same thing with like pushing your morning PTs, whatnot. However hard you're pushing, the flight's mo- more likely to push. I agree with that. That's awesome, Johnson. You were what were you for leadership? I was an element leader from I think it was week three. Did you enjoy it? Uh, I did to an extent, kind of like what Murray's saying and what you were like on the subject of what you're saying. It was fun to an extent, but it was also kind of hard. Because people, like they like they don't want to listen. But I feel like the flight has also been getting better at that since mm-hmm. we've gone on. Like we've gotten a lot better at that. But we still just got that little bit where they don't want to listen to an extent. Like they do the basics, they do all the big stuff. But we just need to start working on the small stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it was fun as an element leader. I felt like I did really good. I felt like my element was locked up most of the time, and I feel like we just did really good. All right. Also, I wanted to add on because I forgot to mention this. For the last couple weeks in the podcast, I've been mentioning how we've been struggling to get on the flight and coming together as a flight. And lo and behold, we have the on the flight ribbon now, which means that we've been coming together a lot more and getting better. And this is our second week with on the flight. So that's a really big thing for us. And I think that's really going to benefit us all. I feel like that too. And talking about the earlier times, like you were talking about week three and four, I wanted to bring it back. All the way to day zero. Um, how did you guys feel on day zero? Day zero was hectic. Like, I've never done more than, like, ten burpees. <laughs> and the second I got here, it was so... Everything moved so quickly that I just started forgetting what I had. And I, I think I ended up doing, like, 50 burpees that day. It was, like, it was crazy. <laughs> but I feel like the experience from it and, th- like, looking back on it now, I feel like... They couldn't have done it in a better way. Mm-hmm. Like kind of getting you like your head right, trying to get you like your emotions in the right place, like not focusing on like what you could have done better or like what was going on now, like as your parents were leaving and not the sad parts, but like how you're going to do here at the academy. I agree with that. And also what you said about burpees, I've only heard about burpees from my sisters who came here. And I came here and I was like, I completely forgot what they were until they told me like, 10 burpees, and I was like, what are those? I was kind of freaking out. Um, How was your experience on day zero? It was something, I can tell you that. I did not know what I was in for. (laughs) I did not even know what this place was until I came here. (laughs) It was, I thought it was just gonna be, you know, some normal school that I sleep at. Before I even came here, orientation days, I was like looking this place up on Google Maps and stuff seeing like, oh, if I live close, you know, I could just walk over to my house real quick. <laughs> that is not at all what it's like. I walked through those doors on days you have to say goodbye to my parents, instantly getting yelled at by <laughs> Tech Sergeant Earl. He is scary for how short he is. <laughs> Agreed. I think it was awesome though, because when I went through the doors, I'm not gonna lie, I got in a little bit of trouble too, because they didn't tell me to walk in yet, and I just kind of walked in. <laughs> And that really scared me. At the time, it was Mr. Bethel, who was a tech sergeant, telling me to go in, so I was, like, really scared. But I came in, and it was like, I came in here thinking, like, this is going to be kind of easy. I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to complete it. 
and it's all gonna be good. I'm just gonna keep it cool. I came in and freaked out. I didn't I didn't know what was going on, and I went to the where we got our canteen belts, and Tech Sergeant James was there, and that was like the one second I could really remember because it was like kind of peaceful but stressful. Everyone was like doing the slideshow, and I was trying to fill up my canteen, and I couldn't because my hands were so shaky from me being nervous that it wouldn't activate the machine, and it was it was crazy, but. I really enjoyed the experience because I feel like, like Johnson said, they, they couldn't have done it a better way because it just helped you focus on the moment and what you need to do instead of thinking about, I wish I said this to them before I said bye or something. Mm -hmm. So Johnson, tell me what motivated you to come here. Um, I was on, like I was going really s on a down low, like downhill slope. I was getting involved with the wrong people. I was getting caught at the, the wrong places at the wrong time. I was doing bad things. Uh, I was missing school. I was tardy to school. I was never attending school. My PO found this place and I looked at it and he tried telling me, they talked me into it for like a couple weeks and I just kept telling them, no, no, I'm not gonna come here. I'd rather just go and do my time and then get it over with. And then my mom really cracked down on me and like told me that she really needs me to come here. So I said, you know what? Let's let's get let's do this. Let's learn the experience. I searched up the place, saw what they had to offer, and I really just liked what I saw. And I f I felt like from that point on, I really needed to change, and that this place could really help me and that and do that for me. I'm glad that you made the decision to come here because I feel like it's really changed you a lot like in the beginning I know she's struggling a lot and now you're like trying to do super good and I think that's really good I feel like that also has to do with the people around me the tech sergeants the the, the leadership like Murray for instance he was kind of a goofball but at the first weeks and then he just skyrocketed he kind of just took off and now he's senior airman he's flight chief he's doing like really really well for himself and so I kind of looked up for him, looked up, looked up at him for that. You were really, you were doing really good, and you kind of helped me. Motiv you motivated me a lot through the whole thing. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And Murray, how about you? What motivated you to come here? What motivated me to come here was my parents mainly. I was not going to school. I haven't been to school in a while. I was doing things I probably should not have been doing during that time. My parents found this place tried convincing me to come here. I kept telling them no, just like Johnson said. I was really complacent about it. I kept saying no, 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 not gonna go. Went to orientation, made it about halfway through orientation, then I kinda just walked out and said I'm not going, you know. Ended up going home, thought about it, did my interview over the phone call, came here, and now that I'm here, realized how much this place really helped me and how downhill I was gonna go if I didn't come here, like school-wise and just life in general. I think that's awesome. Like now you have the lamp and knowledge, which means you have all grades, 80% or higher, which is like, that's a really big, from not going to school a lot to getting all A's and B's is really good. That's pretty nice. So now I'd like to switch up a little bit since we're talking about the past. What about, we're almost at home pass already. And that's crazy. I don't know if you guys have plans yet, but I want to know what do you plan on doing for Home Pass? So my family uh, booked us like a little wood, like house cabin up in the woods somewhere. I don't know for sure where. Uh, it has a hot tub inside of it, which is kind of it's kind of fancy. And then we're just gonna have my family. Uh, I usually don't get to see my grandpa very much because he's he's on the road. He's a truck driver, but he's gonna be there too, and we're gonna. Just spend, I'm just going to spend the time with my family and be able to make more memories before I go back and make some more. That's awesome. I like how you said come back and make some more because that's what it's all about. What What are you looking forward to eating? All of it. <laughs> Probably uh, the yams, like sweet potatoes with the marshmallows. Those really? Are, those are my favorite. Interesting. <laughs> what about you, Murray? How, what are your plans for home bats? My plans? My plans are my brother is going to come down here and drive pick me up, bring me down, show his, show me his place for the first time. Oh. Then after I see that, him, me, and his girlfriend are gonna go down to my house and we're gonna kinda spend that time. I'm gonna try to spend it mainly with family. You know, gonna go over to my aunt's house, do Thanksgiving, 
really excited for the turkey. Mm -hmm. My teacher's gonna make me as my grandma. Her biscuits, good. <laughs> That's awesome. What about, have you thought about anything after commencement? Uh, I'd like to stay in contact with a lot of the, like a couple people here. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to go home and make, be an inspiration for other people that are doing bad. I really like that. I'd like to like show my brother a different path. I want him to know that there is a different path other than the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And that you don't always have to follow in your families that messed up footprints. Like there's always a better way. And that's what I've learned here. I think, I think that's really special too. That's a special thing that they let you learn here. Like the learning, everything you learn here is like really, really helps you in the future. I really like that. That's awesome how you said you want to inspire others. That's, we need a lot more of that. That's awesome. What about you? Uh, I've learned a lot from this place, and I know that when I go back, I also really want to, you know, inspire others. I've learned, like, the difference between good, bad, and I know now how to lead others, not mm -hmm. just try to convince them into doing the wrong thing, but convince them to do the right thing, to know how to stay out of trouble. Just the, you know, the basics of it. That's awesome. So I'd like to wrap it up here. Thank you for joining us on the Axman Podcast, 23 Tech 2, Episode 5. Axman, signing off. <laughs>